As early as today, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, could be making recommendations to the government after touring flood-stricken areas of New Providence. Today, NEMA conducted door-to-door -door visits in the Eastern District, and based on what they find, suggestions will be forwarded on for assistance. Our Charisma Robinson visited the area today, and she spoke to those who were hardest hit. It's pretty much starting all over again for some Eastern New Providence families who lost just about everything in the flood last Tuesday. Our news team visited areas hardest hit along with area MP Hubert Chipman. Over in Nassau East North, the pavements are still trying to wrap their heads around the devastation, which they say totally took them by surprise. We lost all of our furniture and some electronics. Looks like I'm going to lose all my kitchen cabinets, bathroom cabinets. Um, car is still damaged. The pavements say about three feet of water quickly got into their home, leaving a trail of destruction behind. I woke her up and said, we have to go, and quickly picked up everything off the floor, electronics as quick as possible, clothes, put them on the beds, put them on furniture, and got out. And by the time we were getting out the door, car was completely flooded. The Jeep that I was driving had water coming into it, and that barely got out. But if you think that situation was bad enough, think again. This man says he and his family were trapped inside their home for two days. What I did is I punched a hole with a contractor in the wall that was retaining all of the, the standing water. And gradually, having punched a hole in the lower realms of the, of the boundary wall, we managed to get some of it out. But I also had to get a cesspit truck in. Uh, a 6,000 gallon cesspit truck took five loads, i.e. 30,000 gallons, just from this section of the garden alone. This is the lowest laying point of the garden, so this is where it all kind of settled. However, Terence Rollins is looking at the brighter side of things. It, it was a pretty bad experience, but as somebody who's lived through hurricane, who's lived through earthquake, who's been shot at and stabbed in the past, you know, I'll get by, I'll get through. Over on Ridgeland Way, our news team met families rummaging through whatever they could save. The Moxie home in particular was among those hardest hit. But Mr. Chipman says he was surprised to know that the pastor and his family were pretty much in high spirits even after losing so much. A lot of people are in high spirits. Uh, they're wondering what the government is going to do as far as uh, whether it's duty concession or to rebuild their lives. Now 17 teams were dispatched to assess the affected areas in the Eastern District. NEMO official Crystal Glinton says based on what they find, suggestions will be forwarded to assist these families. In going to these areas, we're aware that this is not the first time that this has happened or the second time. It seems as though it happens every 10 years, and some, particularly in the East. And so we want persons to know in terms of rehabilitating their homes, there are a lot of things they have to do. Those who are going to have new, reconst uh, re new construction, that they need to exceed the minimum building code. That is, you have to go higher than whatever the building code states if you're going to construct in flood areas. For the Moxies, just one of the many families who lost everything in the flood, there needs to be regular maintenance of drainage systems in the affected areas. Charisma Robinson, ZNS Network News.